Hello, everyone. This is Heather with Magnificent Mamas, and we're joined here today with Valerie. Valerie, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is Valerie Carmella, and I'm an author of two published books, The Jalen Rose of Rolling Brooks, Volume 1, and Baby Rose, Volume 2 series. What genre would you say your books are? I would definitely say it's fiction and it's paranormal romance. Do you care to tell us a little bit about your books without giving away spoilers or anything? Yeah, I'll do my best. I I really got started with this, uh, inspired by the house that I bought uh, back in 2005. And it, it just seemed like the idea just kind of took off and it's been a process over 10 years getting it all together and I really fell in love with the character and I hope the readers did too with Jalen Rowe and so you know she's a, a young girl that she lost her mother and it became a mystery how she died and so her and her father who was in the military uh, they relocated to Cape Girardeau Missouri and to live with her aunt and uncle so in the story you'll hear a lot about Aunt Claire she grows up and she's asking questions like any young woman would do you know asking questions you know what happened to my mom and they're just being like you know stonewalling her all the time that you know she's been growing up maturing and then I think the only um happy times that she has is reading the newspaper and her horoscope which her aunt claire thinks is silly but to her she i think that's her only way of figuring out and you know her day her her future what it might be she sees about you know the forecast is that there's a world wind romance that's in her forecast and i think it changes that's awesome where did your inspiration come for that book well from the the house that i lived in yes but it started that gets introduced you know in the very beginning ray and melanie they are actually the previous owners and so that story is it's based in cleveland tennessee it's actually my birthplace okay and then the house goes on the market because some tragedies take place and then the story uh relocates you to cape Girardeau, missouri and we'd stay there for a little bit. And then it kind of, you know, gets relocated back to Tennessee. And so in the uh, in volume one, you kind of travel just a little bit. But it kind of, it's like a circle. You know, you get relocated from Tennessee and then you end up back in Tennessee. Yeah, I get that. And that's when, she, when Jalen Rose in Cape Dorado, she meets the love of her life. Once and page of Oh, wow. That's interesting. So your books, are they part of a series or are they just standalone? No, volume one and volume two is a part of the Jalen Rose series. Do, are you working on other, any other books at this time? Yes. A previous book that I, I written uh, back in 2008, I'm going to squeeze in some time, get that one revised, and I would love to get that back out there as soon as I can. And but, that one will be a nonfiction. Okay. That sounds exciting. And I'm really looking forward to it. And it's actually a story about my mom. Really? Can you tell yes. us a little more or would it be giving too much away? Well, it would be like... You know, it's going to be like her autobiography, but in a different way. It's actually going to be laid out in a story, and it's not fiction, so it's nonfiction, and it's going to start in uh, New York. Nice. Yes, so it's going to be, you know, New York's going to be the foundation of the story, and I'm really proud of that because that's, you know, that was her hometown. What challenges did you face while writing your book? Uh, if life still get in the way, I would say uh, my fibromyalgia, the illnesses that I have, they slow me down. But, you know, I just thank God, you know, for the energy and I pray for the strength, you know, to continue. Are there any particular authors or books that have influenced your writing style? I would say I was really intrigued with a Diana uh, Gobon Highlander series. Have you heard of her? I don't think so, but is is it anything like the Highlander TV show? Yes, that's where it uh, came from. Okay. And uh, I read several of her books from that. And I just loved her writing style. You know, she is very creative, very detailed. That inspired me, you know, a long time ago, back in the 90s. Uh, but I have always uh, loved reading from the yeah. earliest. But I would have to say, I would have to say her first. Yes. If you could sit down with a couple authors and have coffee, tea, sit down and drink and talk, who would you pick this 
I'm assuming, I'm guessing you'd pick her. Yes, I would. Is there anyone else? Yeah, it's Stephen Ching. <laughs> His writing is something else, like dark and like everything is so different. Like each story. Yes. And his ability to just be unique in his own way. Yes. Yeah. He's so and intelligent in the writing world. Yes, I definitely want him at my table. Definitely. You know, for someone to say that he keeps a, a heart in a jar on a desk while you write. That's wild to think about. <laughs> What role do you think literature plays in society, and why do you believe storytelling is important? It's always played a big part in our society. Um, I think it played the big part, I think, especially with children. It, it starts with children, and I think we're lost. And one thing that I truly believe is that uh, we perish for the lack of knowledge, and I believe knowledge is in literature, it's in reading. I agree 125%. I was going to say I've always loved reading and since I was younger and I love history, I love researching things and I couldn't Absolutely. imagine not loving reading. My daughter, I homeschool her and she's ADHD and dyslexic, so she struggles with reading and she's just recently got into audiobook and it's always blown my mind that she didn't want to just pick up a regular paperback book and read. I think it's wild. It is. It's wonderful to get those words in there. Yep. And, you know, and to read to her. Um, mm -hmm. It's better than being beautiful. It shows love and affection, and it really just brings out the intelligence in us that we have. We're all teachable. Have you received any awards for your writing? No. Not yet? If you could bring one of your characters to life for a day, who would it be, and what would you do together? One of my characters... Um, I think I would. it would be Jalen Rose. What would you guys do together? We would definitely go to um, the Tybee Island and sit on the beach and whatever we could bring out of the ocean and convey into words one another would be the greatest thing. If we could just tell stories of what the waves bring into us. That's awesome. What's the weirdest or most unexpected place you found inspiration for your story? Experiencing it, living it, witnessing it. There has to be some type of inspiration or feeling, touching, all the five senses. If you could rewrite the ending of any classic novel, which one would it be and how would you change it? Hey, it's all good if you can't think of anything. Kind of put you on the spot with some of these. If your characters had social media accounts, what kind of posts do you think they would share? If my characters... Mm -hmm. I think definitely nature, reading, mm -hmm. book quotes from famous authors, and literature from very famous people and music. Sounds very uplifting. But I think if I can go back to that other question, I guess it would be Romeo and Juliet with Shakespeare. How would you change the end? Romeo would be just a little bit more patient and, and not that... give up really into the grease. And see that she was just asleep? Yes. I think patience is the key and self-control. And it could have been a happier ending. It would have been nice to see them, you know, alive and happily ever sure. after. Yes, and making love laugh. Unfortunately, so, you know, it was a tragedy story, but... Right. But you said, what if? <laughs> yep. No, I agree. I, that's what I was thinking, honestly, like the first story that came to mind when I was thinking that I was trying to think if I could think of any other that I would, if I was asked that question, what I would say. But that was like the first one on my mind, too. There's another one, too. What's that? You know, the, the Gone with the Wind. Oh, yes. I love the book. I love the movie. And she says, tomorrow will be another day. Did you know that there's a second book after that? Yes. Have yes. you read it? Uh, What's your opinion on it? I just think it, it, it just didn't have the same element. As Gone with the Wind. Yeah, it was nice to see the characters, some of them back, but it definitely didn't fit with the feeling you get from Gone with the Wind. Right, because that mystery, she left it there when he closed yeah. the door. And so that mystery was never fulfilled, as far as I'm yeah. concerned. You're always left things, did she go after him? Yeah, that there's just something so... Sometimes a mystery is just meant to be left there left hanging so you can wait for yeah, a sometimes you don't need to understand everything we will we can never as people mm -hmm. we never understand everything and maybe that reminds us a little bit that we're not to know what's meant to come exactly and it le and it just leaves it intriguing because let's if it wasn't we been talking about it now let's everyone sit here and you know ideas on what what's going to happen it's cool if it doesn't
Mm -hmm. If you were going to write a book in a completely different genre than your usual, what genre would you choose? Children. Children's? How come? Yes, because I have so many untold stories that are hidden in the files of online that I would like to share with children. Do you think writing a children's book would be more of a challenge or less of a challenge? All I think would be a challenge to me is getting it illustrated. Yeah. But writing it, no. And I hope to do that soon. I really do. Well, I really hope I can do that. We wish you the best of luck on that. Sounds like Thank you. you already have some ideas worked out and plans moving forward. If you could ask one question to any fictional character ever created, what would it be and who would you ask? And that could even be fairy tale, correct? <laughs> totally. Oh, I think that, that, you know, that really just popped in my mind and I try to scoot it aside, but it's still there. It'd be Cinderella. What would you ask her? I guess it would be, did you forgive your stepmom and stepsisters? That's a good one. A very good one. Being the kind person that she is, I feel like she probably would. But, I mean, we never really know deep down in someone's heart and soul. Do you have any... Anything else you want to tell us or just about yourself, about your book? I don't know if anything special. <laughs> I, you know, I'm very thankful. And um, as you said, you know, looking forward, I am to uh, some book signings that I'm going to be doing in some libraries. And in April, going to be the start of that. So I'm, I'm really excited uh, about that. And um, I just love being in the atmosphere of a library. It's just so fitting that, you know, an author, that's our place. I guess one thing I'd like to talk about is uh, my emotional support animal that steps a no. He's a bunny. He's brought joy to my life. He goes everywhere with us. He travels with us. I'm just really in a happy place right now. I really am. Uh, God's blessing. God's given the strength to go forward. And I'm just looking out for every surprise that pops up. And there's always Thank surprises. You. Yes. Yes. Always good or bad. Not all surprises That's are bad. Not all surprises, true. unfortunately, are good either. It'd be nice if all of them were positive and good, but I think some of the negative ones we can only learn from and become better people if we use it right. So, so. But I think it makes it fun, you know, that you're getting out there and doing what you love, and I'm getting that opportunity. So, uh, and I'm looking for more, and um, and I hope to get, you know, tweaked in, like I said, way earlier in this conversation with yeah. my um, other book. I can't wait to get that one out there, because I've just got to do some editing, revise the cover, and so I'll be really excited over that one. Do you have any... Uh, any what, I'm sorry? The launch date? No. No, I don't. Not yet? I'm hoping, will, I'm hoping to get it done this year. Um, I just don't know what time. We will definitely have to be watching for that. Yes, yes. I believe you'd love it. I really do. Sounds like it. And you seem to be on the same wavelength as me, so. I'm so happy about that. You know, because you're so easy to talk to. And it's really nice to be able to talk to people on here and connect, understand, and have similar thoughts. We're effortless, <laughs> though. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. That means a lot. And what you're doing is a black thing for all the authors. Like I said, I'm really trying and I'm hoping I can connect with more authors, even though I'm already 500 deep, you know, 500 plus interview and whatnot. But every author, every interview is different. And it's been such an uplifting and lightning experience and like just connecting in general it's just it's been an amazing experience and i can't wait to see where this goes you know there's a um, a quote i hope i can remember it correctly but i'll give it a shot and this is for you it's like don't focus on the stair just loop the step first step yep i would say i do that pretty well sometimes i think i want to jump yeah. a couple but you know one step at a time we could all you know and yeah, that's what I'm working on today is to, uh, you know, like I mentioned to you before we got, went live about the calendar thing. So I'm working on that. Yeah. That way I can, you know, take the time to not feel so pressured with these interviews and just really connect and get to know the author and the book. I think that's an important thing. And I feel like putting too much on every single day, I won't be able to connect as in depth as I would like to you know what I mean yes because we all need our rest and we need the days to you know the days to de-stress and focus on something different and you know just have a clear head 
even, you know, taking a break from video calls and just focusing on other aspects of my business. I noticed it does help and come, you come back refreshed. I love talking to authors and connecting with authors and building relationship. Like I said, I helped that lady with Pinterest the other day and it's just, it's so great. It really is. There's nothing like the feeling you get from helping someone. And I've always liked helping people and I enjoy being able to help in this way. With that being said, though, I am going to have to get ready to close this call, up, um, but we will share everything, your books and social media. Yeah, thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been my